In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a turquoise ink by Sailor Yamadori. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Also, down in the description is a link to the turquoise playlist, so if you want to see more turquoise inks, you can find that there. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a little lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some very light shading where quick goes dark to mid-tone to dark, brown goes dark to mid-tone, over goes mid-tone to dark, nine seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, some very nice shading, brown going dark to mid-tone, quick going dark to mid-tone to dark, nice. It's It's very gentle in and out shading that really does stand out well. 15 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show a tiny bit of color variation and that's what we're seeing, that mid to dark tone. And the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Platinum 3776 with a broad nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, minor ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 16 seconds to dry. The medium is dark like the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 22 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show no color variation, which we're not getting, and a smear test you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then is put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this very light blue at the bottom pushing its way up. And it's mixing with a very dark green at the top, giving us this very rich turquoise color. The one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's put in the water, and that blue is forming a line at the bottom, giving the idea that it might be a little bit permanent. It's pushing its way up, and we see that very dark, rich green again at the top, meaning that green is not going to be a holdout color at all. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, a light peppering of shading, like the K in quick is a bit darker. The looks a little darker than the word quick. Over starts slightly lighter to darker, 11 seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 16 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show no color variation, although we get a nice peppering in the extra fine, and the smear test you could probably recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, there's a lot of spread, a lot of feathering, and blowout in the lowercase h. I don't use it in a note-taking situation if I need to go back and highlight. Waters lifting all the green tones, leaving the blue tones that we saw in the chromatography. Now it only took water to get it out of my pen, so despite that, it's just bonding with the paper better. Pen flush does everything that water does, and just maybe a little bit more. We see a little bit more of the white of the paper coming through. One third bleach solution is doing about the same as the pen flush did. It's removing most of it, but not all of it, and we're seeing a little bit more of the white of the paper. Good news is you're not going to need that to get this out of your pen. The next writing sample is done on life paper. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, light peppering of shading where the goes lighter to darker, the K in quick is darker than the word, B in brown is darker than the word, nine seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 15 seconds to dry. 
scrubby for most show, no color variation, although there's a light peppering in the extra fine. And the smear test, you stand a good chance of recovering it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity is 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Sailors, Yamadori has a viscosity of 1.29, making this a wet. If you're interested in how the viscosity tests and all that's done, then down in the description is a link to that video. The next writing sample is done on Franklin Kristoff paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and five seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub, no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and seven seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation and we're not getting it. In the smear test, you could not recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Sailors, Yamadori has an average dry time of 15 seconds, making it normal. The last writing sample is done on G. Lalo paper. We get no bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, nice peppering of shading. The K in quick is darker than the rest of the word. The BR in brown is dark, the rest gets light. Fox goes darker to lighter to darker, seven seconds to dry. Medium is just a tad bit lighter than the stub, quite a bit darker than the extra fine, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, nine seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us no color variation, although we do get it in the extra fine. And the smear test, there's no recovering it if you smear while you're writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Sailor's Yamadori, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I decided to go with a pink ink by Waterman, their Radiant Pink. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description is links to those playlists. What do I think of Sailor's Yamadori? It's a nice tone that stands out as just different enough for me to really like it. I don't know why I like it more than most turquoise. It has that something I just can't put my finger on. So what nib and pen are gonna give the best writing experience with this ink? I'm really not a fan of its darker tones that you get from wetter pens. I'd prefer to use it in a medium to dry flow broad pen where I can get a little bit of the lighter aspects of it with more of its shading coming through. I hope you got something out of this video and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at Mont Blanc's Einstein.